Hey everyone, welcome back. Something a little different for this video. What you're looking at here is the oldest of my hardware collection, dating back to 1997. It runs a 200 megahertz Pentium MMX um, and a Diamond Reaver 128, which has four megabytes of video memory. For storage, I use a compact flash to IDE adapter so that I can quickly swap between cards uh, with MS-DOS 6.2, Windows 95 and Windows 98 installed on them. I also have a GoTech floppy emulator installed that I don't really use much, um, but I'm sure it'll come in handy one day. As for the sound card down here, uh, this is an ISA Sound Blaster 16. What I recently decided to do is install this. It's a Voodoo to 8 megabytes and see how well this PC works with it as I feel this would be a good addition for those somehow unaware um, the Voodoo 2 is a legendary video card by 3DFX specializing in 3D graphics and was launched in 1998 as it was 3D only you still needed a video card that did at least 2D graphics and you'd be use a pass-through cable this here and connect the VGA cable to the Voodoo. We're going to start off with some benchmarking in 3D Mac 1999. With the Voodoo 2, we got a score of 914, but as the Reaver 128 also supports 3D graphics, I thought I'd test that as well. We got a respectable score of 774. Now onto some games that support the Voodoo 2, starting with GL Quake, which is the official OpenGL source port for Quake and enables hardware acceleration. No complaints here, at 800-600 resolution, we got a steady 60fps. Next we have Quake 2, 800 by 600. The frame rate did fluctuate a lot between 20 and 60 FPS, but it mostly hang around 30, which is good enough. <laughs> This is Heretic 2, the third person sequel to the legendary DOS FPS, and built on the Quake 2 engine, 800 by 600 resolution. While the frame rate looks reasonable here, I did find as I got further into the game while playing it on my Twitch stream, there were many occasions where we probably saw below 20 FPS. In Half-Life, I had to drop the resolution to 640x480. I got around 30 FPS mostly, but there were occasions where it would drop below even 20 FPS. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go. 
Unreal 640x480, not the best experience, perhaps not functional here, but it's clear we're barely hitting 30 FPS. Driver, 800 by 600 with the medium graphics preset, very playable experience, we're getting at least 30 FPS here. Bugs Bunny, Lost in Time, 800 by 600, we're getting a very smooth experience with this one. You can use objects like mallets to bust an enemy, but do it fast. It works for a short time. You can pick up objects and throw them to enemies. You can also pick them up, move them, and drop them somewhere else. Midtown Madness, 640x480. Although we're not hit even hitting 20 FPS, it's still surprisingly playable. And finally, Diablo 2 at 640x480. Not a great experience with this one. While playable, we did get a lot of stuttering during gameplay. There are many foes here.
So there we have it. While it may not seem impressive going by most of the gameplay footage, bear in mind that this would have been your pretty average PC gaming experience back in the late 90s, and such hardware was out of reach for a lot of people. That said, I have no doubt the Voodoo 2 is a highly capable card, and I feel the Pentium MMX is holding it back in this setup. What I think I'll do for a future video is pair the Voodoo 2 with a more powerful CPU, something on the Socket 462 platform most likely, just so that we can let the Voodoo 2 reach its maximum potential. Uh, if that's something you'd like to see, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. As for the rest of this PC, I found it's more than capable with most 90s games uh, and handles DOS gaming just fine, at least those that aren't CPU speed sensitive. Whenever I do any DOS gaming over on my Twitch channel, I will play them on this PC where possible. So that's all for this one, be sure to leave a like if you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.